Hello, and thank you for joining us for worship on November the 8th at St. Thomas Lutheran Church in Bloomington, Indiana. I'm Pastor Adrian Meyer. Just a few announcements for the good of our community. First, a reminder that our annual budget meeting will be next Sunday, November 15th at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. The information for joining us via Zoom is included in the weekly bulletin. More information should have come out on uh, Thursday, uh, but we'll also be sure to send it to you again next week so you have all the information about the budget for 2021. Thank you to everyone who's been giving pledges, and we hope that you will continue to send those pledges and drop them off by the East Wing um, and help us uh, get a good sense of where we're going to be into the coming year. Um, out by our front door is a huge box that is just waiting to be filled with ornaments uh, around the theme of God's good creation. All these ornaments will dress a tree and a wreath. Um, the proceeds of the sale of these trees will benefit New Hope for Families. And thank you for participating in that. Thank you to everyone who gave food this weekend as part of Macum's, um, Macum's program. And also thank you for giving to support our community. Uh, uh, we can't do this without you. The link to give is below this video and also on our website. Now let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, in whose image we were made, who claims and calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. Holy One, we confess that we are not awake for you. We are not faithful in using your gifts. We forget the least of our siblings. We do not see your beautiful image in one another. We are infected by sin that divides your beloved community. Open our hearts to your coming. Open our eyes to see you in our neighbor. Open our hands to serve your creation. Amen. Beloved, we are God's children, and Jesus, our beloved, opens the door to us. Through Jesus, you are forgiven. By Jesus, you are welcome. In Jesus, you are called to rejoice. Let us live in the promises prepared for us from the foundation of the world. Amen. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise let us pray to the Lord help save comfort and defend us gracious Lord pray. O God of justice and love, you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need and awaken us to the needs of others through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The first lesson is from Amos chapter 5. Alas for you who desire the day of the Lord. Why do you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness, not light, as if someone fled from a lion and was met by a bear, or went into the house and rested a hand against the wall and was bitten by a snake. Is not the day of the Lord darkness, not light, and gloom with no brightness in it? I hate, I despise your festivals, and I take no delight in your solemn assemblies. Even though you offer me your burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them and the offerings of well-being of your fatted animals, I will not look upon. Take away from me the noise of your songs. I will not listen to the melody of your harps. But let justice roll down like waters, and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson is from 1 Thessalonians. We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about those who have died, so that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means precede those who have died. For that very Lord, with a cry of command, with the archangel's call, and with the sound of God's trumpet, will descend from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. teaching the disciples privately, saying, The kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of the bridesmaids were foolish, and five were wise. When the foolish brought their lamps, they brought no oil with them. But the wise brought flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all who waited became drowsy and slept, but at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the, reply, the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You'd better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. While they were away buying the oil, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet. Then the door was shut. Later, the other bridesmaids also came, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But the bridegroom replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Ten young people were out on the town, the hottest ticket in their pocket, and plans to Uber to the theater. Dinner and drinks at the end of a long day were in order. Phones came out, selfies taken, social media scrolled, and dog pictures shared. By the end of the dinner, ten phones were dead. Five chargers came out, but ten phones cannot be charged with five chargers, and so, bewilderingly, Five feet tromped home for chargers. And then off to the theater, but too late. The show has started. Late seating not allowed. They had the hottest ticket in town, but they didn't make it. When they asked for a few minutes with a charger, they could have asked for a ride. When they took the long walk home, they could have set off for the theater. They were unprepared and they were distracted. In a rash moment, they thought the most important thing was a charged iPhone. But the most important thing was to see the show. We too are distracted and unprepared. We're gas grasping for whatever we think will bring about the kingdom of God. But our task is to show up and be present to bear witness to both the pain of this world and to God's inbreaking reign. It is so hard to hear about the five bridesmaids who didn't make it into the party. 
We want God's party to be a raucous, everyone's welcome, y'all come, the more the merrier kind of party. But there are things that we might be tempted to do that are outside of God's kingdom. In fact, there's a lot of stuff we're tempted to do that falls outside of God's kingdom, outside of God's will for us and for all of humanity. We call it sin. There's no place for sin in the kingdom of God. The bridesmaids were unprepared and distracted, and in truth, so are we. That's what it means to be a sinner. We prioritize our own physical and emotional safety while our siblings in Christ sleep on the street. And while they are harassed by those who are supposed to keep them safe, and while God's beloved are refused their basic and fundamental human rights, we hoard the good gifts that are made to be shared. And if that's the case, the only difference between the wise and foolish bridesmaids wasn't the oil some brought and some forgot but the wise stayed around to get into the party. While the foolish bridesmaids doubled down on their sin, unprepared and distracted, they went in search of oil. They thought that they could secure, they could buy, they could obtain entrance to the party. But the way to get into the party was to stay with the light and to come in with the bridegroom. The foolish bridesmaids stopped waiting at the critical moment. It would have been great if they brought extra oil, but it wasn't about the oil. It was about getting into the party. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light no darkness can overcome. Our task isn't to bring the light. Our task is to follow the bridegroom to the party. Do not get distracted. A few years ago, Matt's annual communication conference uh, for communication scholars was in Las Vegas. Having never been, I, I tagged along. We had young children at home at the time, and that long flight and the time change was brutal, and we mostly slept the whole time. The last night, however, was what we were most excited about. Matt had booked us tickets to see Penn and Teller. And one of the things that's really cool about them, if, if you've never seen them, is that they often explain their tricks. And what you learn is that the trick happens before you even know what the trick is. Long before you're looking for the prestidigitation, the trick's happened. They don't say, pick a card, pick a card. No, I will find your card. Look, a bunny. And then they, like, produce your card. While they're cleaning up from the last trick or while they're doing their little folksy segue to set up the next trick, that's when the trick is happening. They, the distraction occurs before the trick has even begun, when you're not even thinking about it. And that's the kind of distraction that we have to keep alert for. It isn't the obvious sin, but the unobvious sin. The sin that we commit when we're not thinking. The sin that we commit when we think we're being righteous. Luther's kind of famous for, for pointing this out to us, right? He takes a commandment like, thou shalt not murder. The kind of thing that almost all of us have firmly in hand, right? And then he says that this commandment means we are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but, and here's the kicker, instead help and support them in all of life's needs. Have you helped and supported all your neighbors, even the ones you don't agree with? Have we not sat idly by while refugees were refused the safety and security of entrance into our country? Have we not demanded the cheap plastic products without a care for the conditions of those who manufacture them? The great distraction, I think, is, in the words of Peter Steinke, that we prefer peace over justice. We want to just get along, even if it means some of us have everything while others suffer. When I wrote this sermon, votes were still being tabulated, and still we wait. By the time my words reach you, I predict we'll be looking at a world that is somehow changed one way or the other. So what do we do in the wake of a contentious election? The meme parade of social media urges kindness. And to be sure, I value kindness. As Christians, we value kindness, but we also value justice. 
We value peace, but we have to acknowledge that we believe that there is no peace for me unless there's peace for we. The grammar stinks there, but I think that you will agree that the sentiment is right on. Dag Hammarskjöld said, no peace which is not peace for all, no rest until all has been fulfilled. Our job isn't to rest on our on our loyals drinking our job is not to rest on our laurels drinking to our victory or mourning our defeat. The task is to be present to the pain of this world. My friend Claire Haas, who's a community organizer and anti-racist coach, wrote this week about the difference between keeping someone at a distance and keeping boundaries. We think that distancing ourselves from others protects us, but it really just hurts them and compounds the problem. Keeping boundaries, on the other hand, holds the space to others to, for others to grow. We did not all vote for the same candidates, but we can listen very carefully and deeply to the pain and hurt of others while still respecting our own feelings and listening to them. We can call one another to account without being insulting. This is important. We can love one another and not tolerate intolerance. We can remember that sometimes Jesus made people mad in order to bring about much needed blessing for the poor in spirit and the mourning and the peacemakers and the persecuted. This is hard work, but it is the work. It's the work of showing up. It's the opposite of being distracted. It's being alert and aware both for the ways that the world does not reflect the kingdom of God and for the dawn from on high that breaks upon all of us. The disco ball is just beginning to swirl and the DJ is warming up. And this brings us back to today's parable. The foolish bridesmaids were fools because they missed the party. They didn't show up. They looked at what they lacked and they ran off to secure it for themselves. They thought they were low on oil, but what they were low on was light. And there were still five lights right there. What the fools needed was sitting next to them all along. Five lights may not have been as bright as ten, but the absent bridesmaids still could have been there to greet the bridegroom. When you find your light growing dim, don't go off in search of oil that you can secure for yourself. No, when you find your light going out, stay close to the people who still have light. Draw near to those whose hearts are on fire for the kingdom, who know the dynamic truth of real peace, who proclaim in daylight what was whispered in the dark. Draw near to those who seek first the kingdom of God and its righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Five lights have, may not have been very bright, but ten bridesmaids at the feast would have been a fantastic party. Beloved of God, the party starts now. Look, the kingdom of God comes. Ready the world, light your lamps, prepare the feast. Do not let sin distract you. Be present to the pain and plenty, the beauty and brutality of this world. Lean into it. The party is starting. Don't miss it. Amen.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all those in need. Holy God, you rouse us to deep praise as we gather for worship. and live in our worship with sincere and heartfelt song. Sustain the work of all church music musicians and artists who lead us in prayer and praise, especially Mike, Katie, and Melissa. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Creator, surprise and delight us with the beauty of the world you have made. Bless the work of landscapers, architects, and artists whose work invites us into harmonious living with your creation. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Judge, let justice roll down like waters over this world. Reign over the courtrooms of every land in the hearts of those who guard the law and those who stand accused of crime. Be present in cases where we long for both justice and mercy to prevail. Be with us as we wait, watch, celebrate, or mourn the results of the election. May our leaders work to make our country look more like your kingdom come. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Companion, console those who feel lonely or abandoned. Share the hours of those who live and eat alone. Comfort those who have few friends or who struggle with their identity and place in this world. Sick with the sick, hospitalized, or institutionalized, especially Jim, Bruce, Carol, Tim, Roger, Paula, Erica, Bev, Liz, Audrey, Joanne, Deborah, and Casey Marie. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy Protector, be with all observing Veterans Day. Guard the lives of active duty and retired military personnel. Comfort all who mourn those who have died in the line of duty. Heal the wounds, both physical and mental, experienced by service members. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Holy and Immortal One, we pray in thanksgiving for the lives of all who have died. Remind us of the frailty and shortness of our own lives and inspire us to use them for the building up of your kingdom. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. God of all goodness, generations have turned to you, gathered around your table, and shared your abundant blessings. Number us among them that, as we gather these gifts from your abundance and give thanks for your rich blessings, we may feast upon your very self and care for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our sovereign and servant. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
it is right to give our thanks and praise. You are holy, almighty and merciful God. You are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it and gave thanks and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you to mercifully accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all glory and honor in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Our, our Father, Father who, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. There's a place for you at this banquet. Come and feast at Jesus' table. and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. 
Lord Jesus, in this simple meal, you have prepared a banquet. Sustain us on the journey. Strengthen us to care for the least of your beloved children and give us glad and generous hearts as we meet you on the way. Amen. May the God of all creation in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, give you reason to rejoice and be glad. The blessing of God's sovereign Savior and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen.
beloved of God, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.